Hello again, and welcome to another fun lesson in English. My name is Karen, and today we're going to learn about sports. By the end of the lesson today, I want to make sure that you can understand and speak about sports and some famous athletes. Are you ready? Let's go. So what are we going to do today? First, we're going to read a riddle. If you were at the last lesson, you know what a riddle is. And if you weren't, a riddle is a question with a little funny twist of an answer. Then we're going to learn about sports and some famous athletes. We're going to learn about a special event in history. Again, what's an event? Event is an occasion or something special that happened in history. We're going to read some sports trivia questions. We're going to learn some jokes. We're going to talk about our dreams. And then we're going to test our knowledge at the end. So are you ready? Let's go. I'm going to need you to get a piece of paper and a pencil so that you can write things down. So you'll be able to remember them. Throughout the broadcast, you'll see words. Words that I'm going to translate for you. Words that I'm going to explain for you. I want you to write them down so you can remember them. Because you might need them at the end of the broadcast. Are you ready? Let's go. But before we begin, I have a riddle for you. What comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a thousand years? Once in a minute, twice in a moment. Now, those of you that are remembering what moment means, moment is a very short period of time. What comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand years. This one's tricky because it has nothing to do with what the words mean. Look at the words. The letter M comes once in a minute, twice in moment, and doesn't appear at all in the word thousand. Cool. Remember that one. That's a fun one to ask your parents or friends. So let's start. Basketball. What do we really know about basketball? Some new words for you. Bucket. You can see what that is. There's a picture of it right there. Basket. Again, picture right there. I switch between the two of them. Don't get confused. The basket is that thing made out of straw. The bucket is made out of plastic. And peaches. Peaches are a really yummy fruit. Did you know that basketball was invented in 1891 by a man named Jim Naismith? It's true. Jim Naismith was looking for something to do with his class, and he made up this game. He took two peach baskets, peach buckets, excuse me, put them on either side of the soccer field, and then he gave them a ball. And he told them to try and get the ball in to the buckets. And that is how basketball was made. In 1936, basketball became an Olympic sport. So, I don't know if you know this or not, but in the 19, I think it was the 1992 Olympics, the United States decided that they'd had it with never winning in the basketball. What did they decide to do? They took the best NBA players and sent them as a team to participate in the Olympics in Moscow. They called the basketball team the dream team. And it was. They trampled the Russian group. They won the gold. Obviously, they're the NBA players. And all the, real good all the real famous names that you know were probably on that team. Want to know more? Look it up. Today, the NBA, or the National Basketball Association, is one of the most popular professional sport leagues in the world. Professional means that they play and they get money for it. I put the words Hebrew and Arabic there for you so that you remember to translate it into your own language for you so that you remember what the word means because the word is going to appear again. Who are the famous basketball players? 
there's Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Wilt Chamberlain, Oscar Robinson, and Michael Jordan. There are also some more. Those of you now in this generation probably are more familiar with LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. But did you know that Michael Jordan, who used to play on the Chicago Bulls, is afraid of water? It's true. He actually refused to play in a, game, in a pickup game one day because there was a lake nearby. Kobe Bryant actually spoke Italian as well as English. Kobe Bryant used to play on the LA Lakers and we miss him desperately. He died earlier this year. And LeBron James, who played for the Miami Heat, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the LA Lakers, and is considered one of the best basketball players ever, actually played football, American football with that strange ball in 10th grade, and he made the state championship. He was that good at football as well. But who I really want to talk to you about is someone a lot of people don't know about, and that's Oscar Robinson. Oscar Robertson was born in 1938, and he was nicknamed the Big O. He's in the Hall of Fame. Why? Once because he was an amazing basketball player. And the second time, because he was part of the 1960 Olympic basketball team. He is best known, however, because he was the president of the NBA for a really, really long time. And he happens to have been one of the 50 greatest basketball players ever. So now you know a little bit about Oscar Robertson. I bet you anything, you can stump your friends and family if you mention that name, sort of casually, say, oh, I know who Oscar Robinson is. Do you? Now let's talk about soccer. Soccer is one of the most favorite things that you guys all like to play, especially you boys. And I'm not going to be chauvinistic here. Girls like to play it too. Did you know that soccer, which is called football in most of the world, and that's really why we have a problem translating it from the language we speak here to English, because in English, it's called football, if we translate it. It's thought to be the world's most popular sport. There are 11 players on each team. A player is the person that is on the field actually playing the game. Some vocabulary for you so you understand. Touching the ball, to touch. Don't do that. You don't do that in soccer. Kick the ball. We all know what that means. I think it's one of the first words we all learn when we're learning English. <laughs> to knee the ball. Yes, that's actually a term. You actually use your knee to move the ball. And head the ball. Sort of self-explanatory, don't you think? And the last one is to score a goal. When you get that ball into the net, past the goalie, you've scored. So did you know that the players, except for the goalie, cannot touch the ball with their hands? They can only kick it, knee it, or head it in order to make it go towards the goal. A lot of people didn't know that. You'd be surprised. Especially when I watch my classes play on the playground during recess. <laughs> Some of them don't remember they're not allowed to touch the ball. Did you know that the World Cup is an international? International means it goes beyond just one country. It's all over the world. And it's played every four years. Famous players that played there are David Beckham, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Mia Hamm. Bet you the last name isn't familiar for some of you. We'll talk about her in a minute. But some famous little fun facts. David Beckham played for Manchester United, Real Madrid, and AC Milan, and even played in LA for a US soccer team. It's true. Lionel Messi stopped growing at the age of 11. At the age of 11, up until that age, he was probably one of the tallest people in the class. Now. He's not one of the tallest people, is he? But he's still one of the best soccer players. And Cristiano Ronaldo, did you know 
that his last name is actually Dos Santos Aviero? I didn't know that. And this is a fun fact that I learned and I want to share with you. He's actually named after the U.S. President Ronald Reagan. Maybe you didn't know this, but the U.S. President Ronald Reagan, before he became president, was an actor. He was in films. And Ronaldo's mother really liked him. She thought he was very good looking, and she decided to name her son after him. And that's how he got his name. So now let's talk about Mia Hamm. Mia Hamm is one of the best and greatest women's soccer players ever. She was born in 1972. She was a two-time Olympic gold medalist playing on the team and a two-time FIFA Women's World Cup champion. She played in four FIFA champions, championships. She led her team at three Olympic Games. Apparently, one of them they didn't win because she only has two gold medals. And she holds the record for the most international goals by a woman or man, that is, up until 2013. So while I was looking this up, I thought about that. Well, what does that mean? She held the record up until 2013. Who holds it now? So I went and did the work for you. Canada's Christine Sinclair actually broke the person who broke Mia Hamm's record in January 2020. Up until then, then from 2013 to 2020, a woman named Abby wore it. And I cannot remember her last name right now, so you might want to be looking that up for me as well. But the person who holds the most international goals scored in a competition is Iran's Ali Dai. I hope I pronounced that right. I practiced it at home. And he has 109 international goals. But if you look at the little print there, you'll see that Ronaldo is catching up. He already has 99. He's not so far away. 10 more, and we're there. So now let's talk about swimming. Swimming is a very, very, very hard sport. I don't know if you knew that. It doesn't look like a lot. There are actually four styles of swimming. There's the breaststroke, which we all know. We've actually seen people do. Usually it's old women with hats on their heads. There is freestyle, which is going forward with your hand. It's actually the fastest way to get across the pool. There is the butterfly, which is one of the hardest things to do. Trust me, I've tried. It's not easy to do. You look like a floundering fish. And the backstroke which we're going to talk about in a second. So did you know that it only became a competitive sport in the early 1800s? Up until then, people were just swimming around for no reason. It's the second most watched sport in the Olympic Games after gymnastics. Most people, when they go to watch the Olympics, tune in to see the gymnastics. It's fun to watch them do those flips and all that stuff. But swimming is the second one. And mostly it's because of the amount of attention it's gotten in the last couple of years. Did you know, and I know this because I have two sons who are swimmers, pools are usually 25 meters long. I know, sometimes we get in the pool and it seems like a really long way. Think about it that in the Olympics, it's twice that length. It's 50 meters long. When they compete, they compete on a 50-meter pool. And it is considered, as I said, the hardest sport because the water is pushed with your muscles. There's actually some sort of um, back, oh, I don't remember the word now, but it's harder for you to push through the water than it is to push the air. Try it sometimes. Get in a pool and start pushing your hands. You'll see that it's a lot harder to move the water than it is to put your hand up in the air. This is a lot of exercise for your body, which is why when people want to start toning their bodies, a lot of people will go swimming. Famous swimmers are Michael Phelps, Mark Spitz, and our own Israeli, Yaakov Tamarkin. 
Now, here's a fun fact for you. At 15 and nine months, Michael Phelps was the youngest male to break a world record in swimming. Look at that again. He was the youngest male to break a world record in swimming because, yes, ladies, there is a girl who broke it earlier in her life and she holds the record. Her name, was, her name was Karen Muir, and she broke it at the age of 12. It's a fun fact, look it up. And did you know that Mark Spitz in the 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich won seven gold medals? He was the first person to ever do that. And that record held until 2008 when Michael Phelps broke the record and won eight gold medals at the Beijing Olympics. It's a fact, look it up. So here's a new word for you. As I said, there were four styles to swimming. We said there's the breaststroke, freestyle, butterfly, and the backstroke. And why am I telling you about the backstroke? Because Yoko Tamarkin is our representative in the backstroke. He was born in 1992, and that is his competition. He likes to do the backstroke. In fact, he's very good at it. And he represented Israel in the 2012 Olympic Games in London and also in the 2016 ones in Rio. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure his career isn't over yet, so we're wishing him the best of luck. I hope that you enjoyed this, and now we're going to go on a break.
and we're back. I hope you had a nice break, and now we're going to continue. Let's talk about track and field. Track and field is actually a whole bunch of different events. It's probably the oldest sport or athletic competition in history. Do you know why? It's because it started in Greek, in Greece, excuse me. Greek is the language, Greece is the country. So here are some words that I want to review with you. Foot, I hope you all know what your foot is. And race, which is a competition. We do it a lot. Who can get there first? Who's last? We say all sorts of things. So the first Olympic event was actually had only one event in it. And it was called a foot race. In the state, it was called actually in the formal terms, a stadium foot race. Foot race, a running race. And the race was around 180 meters stadium. There was a track that went around. It was 180 meters. It wasn't even a kilometer. So I guess we'd call it a sprint. And the first winner was named Corbus of Elis. You can see a picture of him there. Handsome fella, isn't he? Track and field, as I said, is a sport with many, many events in it. Some of them are running. There's also jumping. And there's also throwing. Some words that you, want, you might hear tossed around when they talk about running races is a relay event. A relay event means that you run, you pass something to someone else, or you touch them, and then they continue. That's a relay. And a team, teams are everywhere. There's a soccer team, there's a basketball team, and there's also a track team. A lot of the high schools have a track team. Are you on it? If you are, good for you. And if you're not, maybe you want to think about joining. Most of the events in the track and field event are individual. Individual means you do it by yourself. But some, like the relay one, is done as a team. Did you know that the Greeks added the pentathon, pentathon, which means five. Penta means five. So the pentathon to the Greek, to the Olympics in 708 BC. In addition to the stadium foot race, they added four more events. The javelin, which you can see a picture of there, it's like throwing a huge spear. A discus, where you throw like a big frisbee type thing, but it's really heavy and you have to throw it. The long jump, a lot of you do that in sport in your gym classes or your sport classes. You run, take off, and you have to jump as far as you can. You, you end up in a um, place that has a lot of sand in it. Do you remember this from elementary school? I know that in my school they're constantly practicing it. And wrestling. Wrestling, standing on two sides of the mat, you have to try and pin someone to the mat. The most famous track and field athlete that most people know about is Usain Bolt. He was born in 1986 in Jamaica, and he is a nine-time Olympic winner. He won the gold nine times. He's considered the fastest man on earth. I guess that's why they gave him the nickname Lightning Bolt. A lightning bolt is also, the lightning as it comes down is called a lightning bolt. It comes down quickly, just like Usain Bolt. But do you know about Jesse Owens? I grew up learning about Jesse Owens. Obviously, I was around before Usain Bolt. Jesse Owens competed in the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin. Now, he's considered one of the greatest athletes, and here's why. If you think about it, and this is going to be a little bit of a history lesson, in 1936, who was in power in Germany? Those of us, those of us that remember our history lessons know it was Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler had just come to be in power in Germany. And 
what better way to show how wonderful and great Germany was than to hold the Summer Olympics. The Olympics were held in Berlin, and of course people came from all over the world, including the American track and, track and field team, one of the members, Jesse Owens. Now, remember, Adolf Hitler had this thing about people being superior, being better, being the best. Who were the best? White people with blue eyes and blonde hair. Those were considered the best people in the world. So obviously, if you had those characteristics or traits, you were going to be the best and you were going to get the gold. Jesse Owens was black, not blonde, not blue-eyed, and definitely not white. Adolf Hitler was not too happy to see him, but he was happy to show the world that the white people were best. And guess what? Jesse Owens won four gold medals in that Olympics. He won it in the 100-meter sprint, the 200-meter sprint, the 4x100 relay, and the long jump. To put it in not-so-nice terms, he beat the pants off of the German athletes. Hitler was not happy, especially since he had to put the gold medal on Jesse Owens. Guess they showed him that he was not as smart as he, think it, he thought it was, and definitely, white people are not superior. We're good, but we're not superior. But do you know about Flojo? Flojo is one of my favorite athletes. Her name is actually Florence Griffith Joyner, and she is the fastest woman of all times. She set records in 1988 for the 100 meter and the 200 meter sprint. Again, we, read, we learned about Usain Bolt holding the records in the men's. She holds it in the women's. Unfortunately, she died in 1998, but she was one of the most colorful and best women athletes ever. So now we're going to review. You'll see on the screen a list of 10 athletes and four events. I'm gonna give you a minute. I want you to look at them and try and match them to the event that they participate in. Are you ready? Go!
Okay, so let's see. Cristiano Ronaldo, what does he play? Is he a basketball player? Is he a swimmer? No, he plays soccer. I'm sure you got that one, so we're gonna go on to the next one. Usain Bolt. We said that Usain Bolt is a track and field person. Mia Hamm, one of the best soccer players. Florence Griffith Joyner, I just told you about. She's a track and field person. She's the fastest woman runner. Mark Spitz. Hmm. Mark Spitz was a swimmer. Seven gold medals in the 1972 Olympics. Kobe Bryant. We all know who Kobe Bryant is. Yaakov Tamarkin. Yaakov Tamarkin, swimmer. Backstroke, hoping to see great things from him. Oscar Robinson. Do you remember? He's the guy we talked about who was one of the best basketball players. Jesse Owens, just talked about him in history, track and field, great. And Michael Phelps, obviously swimmer. Here are the answers again. Check yourself to make sure you got them right. I'm sure you did. And let's go on. I put this picture there for you because I want you to think about something. All of you now are at a place where you're beginning to get your dreams and your hopes sort of put together and focused. This picture is taken from a very short video that you can look up on YouTube. It's about the Indian soccer team. In short, it's about a whole bunch of boys who played soccer or wanted to play soccer and they had no place to play. Every bit of land in India that they could find was being used for farming. The only place that they could play, they were told, was to go play in the middle of the lake. Lake, big, bottle, big body of water. So what did they do? They built a raft made of wood that was big enough for them to play on. And they started to practice on it. And the people laughed at them and told them they couldn't do it, but they wanted to be soccer players. Do you want to know how it ends? Do you think they made it? Do you think they made a soccer team? Do you think they made it to the Olympics? I'm not going to tell you. If you want to know, look it up. Indian soccer team, and I hope you enjoy the video. So what did we learn today? We learned about basketball and Oscar Robinson. Again, trivia person. Ask your parents or your friends. Soccer and Mia Hamm. We learned about swimming and Yaakov Tamarkin and Mark Spitz. Track and field, Usain Bolt. The Olympics of 1936 and Jesse Owens. And we learned along the way some trivia facts about sports. So now to close up this thing, I'm gonna ask you a couple of riddles and jokes about sports. Here's the first one. Why couldn't Cinderella play soccer? Hmm. Do we all know who Cinderella was? And why couldn't she play soccer? I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to think about that. 10, nine, eight, not pressuring you or anything. Five, four, three, two, one. Why couldn't Cinderella play soccer? Because she was always running away from the ball. Now, the ball is also that circular thing that we kick around and also it's another name for a big dance and we all know that Cinderella went to a huge dance met the prince and at the stroke of midnight or 12 o'clock at night she ran away so why couldn't she play soccer because she was always running away from the ball here's another one for you what's a golfer's favorite letter golfer with that big thing Hits the ball. I'll give you a hint. Where does that ball sit? Thinking? Are you thinking? That little thing that the ball sits on is called a T. So what's the golfer's favorite letter? T. Sort of silly, wasn't that? But I like it anyways. 
Let's do another one. What animal is best at hitting a baseball? Now this you have to know a little bit about baseball. As you know, when you play baseball, you have to get up, you have to stand on the plate, you have that big thing in your hand, that was a big clue, and you have to hit the ball with it. So what animal is best at hitting? That would be the bat. Bat is an animal. It's also that wooden thing that, you use, that we use to hit the ball out of the park. And what is the hardest part about skydiving? The hardest part about skydiving is the ground. Because if you don't do it correctly, boom, you're going to hit it, and that's hard. Okay. Thank you very much for being with me. I hope you had a wonderful time in this lesson, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.